My name is Becky and I'm here with Ian. We're going to talk about our Winnipeg, which is the new municipal development plan for Winnipeg. Um, our s presentation is not really about reporting and it's not really about indicator systems. It's a, it's a story about how we got to the point where we started to think, hey, maybe we need an indicator system that will help us with reporting. So that's the connection. So Winnipeg um, looks like this in the winter. <laughs> it's in Manitoba. It is just under 700,000 people, so that's about 60% of the entire provincial population. Um, there was very small population growth in the 90s, but now we're looking at 180,000 new people over the next 25 years, which is a big push for our new development plan to think about how to accommodate those people. It's situated on two rivers, the Red Inn and the Assiniboine. You might know them as oftentimes the longest skating rink. Take that, Ottawa. And we, we like to take turns. <laughs> um, it has great cultural scene. I recommend you all come and visit us. So we're looking at making this new development plan. We ha have a one-year initiative to make an entirely new development plan. City of Winnipeg needs to review its development plan every five years, but this year instead of reviewing, we're making an entirely new plan. Started with uh, background research and um, our mayor told us, okay, these are the things you need to do. Do the background research. Okay. Uh, plan for action. Have continuous community involvement and have a sustainability framework. So we started last April, April 25th, with the Mayor's Symposium on Sustainability. And coming out of the symposium, which involved 300 Winnipeggers from all across the city, and by looking at other sustainability plans, we came up with these Our Winnipeg, Our Winnipeg principles. And like I said, we didn't start out with the idea of making an indicator system. But if you look at some of these principles, um, adapt and self-correct, measure progress, set clear goals, kind of set the stage for the point we are now at looking at developing an indicator system. So we have the sustainability framework. Uh, sustainability is shaped, every part of the process has shaped all of our discussions. Uh, we have a sustainability strategy that's going along with the plan. And we've also worked with uh, community partners who are experts in sustainability like IISD, which is conveniently located in Winnipeg. So a major part of this process, this one-year process, is Speak Up Winnipeg. This is the name of the public involvement, public consultation process. We were tasked with and made the promise to the city to have the most comprehensive public consultation process that Winnipeg has ever had, and maybe the most comprehensive public consultation process ever had in North America. So it's called Speak Up Winnipeg. The hub is speakupwinnipeg.com, which I urge you to go check out. We had daily blogs. It um, people from across the city, uh, the city departments wrote the blogs. People commented. People from the city answered questions. We had videos, um, user-generated videos from all different people in the city. We had the Mayor's Symposium on Sustainability and a Downtown Design Charrette. So between the two of those, it involved about 800 people. We've had um, the street team, with those people in the blue shirts there that went to festivals all during the summertime, talked to people about the city and what they wanted. And we had round tables, which I'll talk about next. 
This is a picture of a roundtable we had on poverty, which was one of the 80 roundtables we've had so far, involving over 800 peop people in total. To do roundtables, so many roundtables in such a short period of time, we actually partnered with community organizations. So, for example, with this one, we talked to Win Winnipeg Poverty Reduction Council, who said, we would like to talk to you about poverty. We would like to talk to as many people about poverty. How should we do this? And we worked together to design the roundtable, invite the people, collect the information, and share the information back to everyone who's involved. What people in the roundtables also told us was that they are already doing work in their communities that the city was looking at doing with this new development plan. They wanted to be involved with the city to work towards shared goals. They wanted to share information that they had, but they also wanted to ac access to information that the city had. And they wanted continuous dialogue even after this Our Winnipeg Initiative project was finished. So, so far we've talked to about 40,000 Winnipeggers, and like I said, there's just under 700,000 people in Winnipeg. I'll leave you to do the math if you want to figure out the percentage. Uh, we've had 80 roundtables, we've had over 20,000 website visitors, um, over 1,600 comments. And although people talked about many different things, Winnipeggers are very passionate about dog parks, as an aside, but the themes going throughout all the roundtables, the website, on the street, and at the symposiums was that there's a necessity for accountability, transparency, and measurement within the city of Winnipeg. And that people in Winnipeg want to be more sustainable overall. We want the city as a corporation to be sustainable, but also the entire city and everyone wants to be involved in moving towards that goal. So we think back to the beginning, we had that arrow with the red circles, um, our, our Winnipeg principles. And then we had the Speak Up Winnipeg feedback, which is what Winnipeggers told us, is that there these three main themes came out. Transparent decision making is important. Measurement and continuous improvement. And this desire for ongoing community involvement. So these are all central to effective sustainability planning and as indicator people, you can see how this also leads into that. So I'm gonna pass this off to Ian. Thanks. So chronologically, um, much of what Becky talked about took us uh, or, uh, from last April until just before Christmas. And then it was time to uh, to actually sit down and start writing the plan and to start thinking about what some of these uh, calls for transparency and measurement meant. And we knew that in general, out of the process, uh, as, as Becky observed, that there was a need for measurement and it really put the idea of indicators on our, on our radar. And the Speak Up Winnipeg process specifically uh, impacted the need for an indicator system that had community involvement. And in, I think in three different ways. One, it set a precedent for dialogue we had sort of put ourselves out there as uh, uh, an active listener and uh, communicator with the community, and that was uh, enjoyed by all, and, uh, and we could see the benefits of it even just in this project. And there seems to be a, uh, a sense that that's going to continue, um, in the sense that the city corporation will continue its commitment. Uh, it established higher standards for transparency, because everything through this project, um, through the website, has been public. Um, over whatever it is now, nearly 10 months of um, having that website up, we've only had to moderate about 10 comments. <coughs> so it's, it's really open to just about anything. And it has led to greater, um, to requests for greater partnership. There's, um, we have started some things, and it's amazing the snowball that starts when you start being uh, willing and enabling as far as getting people to sit down. So those are some of the things that we, we wanted to uh, incorporate. And we had some really good momentum. We had a vision. 
um, some consensus on some uh, high-level objectives, but where to start? So one of the first steps um, is uh, that the city has just begun partnering with IISD, the United Way, the province of Manitoba, Health in Common, and uh, a host of other organizations, including the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, on a pilot project related to community indicators. And this, um, this is called PEG, which is both shorthand for uh, the name of the city and also gets at the kind of um, pegging your process idea or pegging your progress idea that um, is uh, uh, what this is all about. So through this partnership, the city is able to tap into expertise and um, uh, in, a, in a host of subject areas, but especially measurement, um, and will uh, therefore be learning a lot about measurement. And it's just a pilot project for now, but we're certainly optimistic that it will turn into something uh, fully fledged and self-sustaining that um, will help us and also um, others in the community. So that's an important first step, but we've had to do some thinking, I guess, uh, um, because we are pretty new to the measurement game about all of our measurement needs. So, um, and some of this is informed by that need to plan for action, that we need to have uh, a really action-oriented plan that can actually be implemented. And that may sound sort of obvious, like why else would you do a plan? But um, this is something that uh, seems to, a fate that befalls many communities that they come out with idealistic plans that sort of fall down in the application. And specifically, that was one of the critiques uh, of our, um, our current plan, I guess, until, the, until this new one becomes, uh, becomes law. So we needed to think about uh, the measurements and tools that were needed in order to enable action. And we, we've sort of come up with three. And I'll qualify these by saying that at present, we're still about a month away from finishing drafting of the plan. So these are just at the concept stage now. And I'll discuss them briefly, but of course they'll have to be um, assented to politically before they would become real. Um, so the first one is a sustainability indicator system that could track overall sustainability outcomes at the community level. So that's uh, kind of the natural fit for something like the PEG uh, project. Also a set of more locally scaled neighborhood indicators that could be used to define areas for revitalization activities. So these might be sort of a finer grain set that uh, overlaps slightly with, with the first one. And then the third would be kind of a hybrid set of measures, probably some of number one, some of number two, plus other land supply data that could be used to update the plan and ensure that um, the right kind of land is available for development and that the right kinds of tools to uh, guide, uh, collaboratively guide um, the kinds of development that will contribute to the vision of the plan, which is shared by the community, comes to pass. <coughs> so those are, those are the tools that we're thinking about. Um, and as we go forward, we're considering some, some important points. And I suspect from what I've already uh, learned over the last day, day and a half, um, that many of you have have grappled with some of these and uh, maybe continue to do so. Um, so these are not unique issues, but I'll explain how they connect to our process. So one is timing. The timing with our partners and uh, in the community and uh, um, other partners like other governments is really, really good in one way, in the sense that we've had this massive dialogue. We have um, uh, some ideas about uh <laughs> about objectives that everyone can agree on, and we have a, a, an agreed upon vision. So we know what people want. So the timing is good in that sense. And in some ways, we're all on the same page, which is, um, or some of us are on some of the same pages. So that's a rare, a rare occurrence and a real opportunity. And all of that points to moving quite quickly. But um, of course, uh, moving too fast and missing partnership opportunities, learning opportunities, and uh, opportunities to apply best practice is sort of the counterpoint there. The other thing that we're thinking about is we had sort of laid out a bunch of different measurement needs or kinds of tools, and 
we recognize that we may have specific needs that, um, that are more particular to our corporation, more sort of program performance things, and um, we have to be careful not to mix those up with a community indicator system um, because I guess the fear is for one thing that the either of those could be under-resourced if they're combined or we may um, compromise on, on our um, approach to, to what we measure and how we measure it. Uh, the third thing is, a, is probably the, the prickliest one, is that we don't have extensive corporate experience with the use of indicators, especially communi community indicator systems. So participating in a project like that and integrating it into our systems is going to require significant corporate education and culture change. And I guess the good news is I've heard that this is something that is uh, of interest and in being worked on uh, by all kinds of different people across the country. So I'm hoping we can learn from, learn from them and contribute to knowledge in that area. And of course, communication um, to get sort of beyond just uh, tracking things and sitting on a shelf and actually integrating it into planning um, tools and approaches requires communication. And this is, this is an interesting uh, opportunity to build some of this measurement stuff together with uh, the future of Speak Up Winnipeg so that we have a way of involving the community in dialogues about what the indicators are saying and also um, uh, g gathering uh, qualitative and other kinds of data through that, through that dialogue. Oh, and I, I should have mentioned too, it wasn't on the list because it's sort of taken as, as a given that uh, resources is always an issue uh, in any organization, municipalities especially. Whatever we, uh, to, say, to say measurement's the poor cousin in the municipal world means that it's going to get by with lots of, <laughs> lots of volunteer contributions probably. Um, so, so those are all the things that we're considering. And, and now we're ready to go. We're, we're drafting the plan. It's uh, anticipated for release close to the end of this month, uh, becoming law, we hope, in, in later this spring. And so we're ready to, we're ready to get started, basically. <laughs> and uh, the things that we're taking forward from what we've learned and what we've heard from the community are that uh, there is a real role and value for measurement. Um, measurement is critical to connecting, uh, to really getting the value out of what we heard from 40,000 Winnipeggers, connecting those visions and objectives to our actions <coughs> and checking them against that. So that's critical to transparency. Secondly, we're designing, as we're creating the plan and some of the tools that will support the plan, we're uh, fortunately able to design them in an integrated way that builds in the possibility of um, robust measurement systems. So um, uh, I can see parallels with what many other people have said, um, including in the last session, about the need for integrated decision making. And we're trying to build that into a revised um, internal reporting system. So that's the equivalent of, of um, the Treasury Board submission type of uh, uh, approach that's used. So we're looking at integrated decision making uh, as part of that. And that's being supported by integrated teams. So trying to trying to get out of that siloed thinking. And of course, um, the most exciting uh, lead I so far on this is this PEG project, which um, not only gives us the opportunity to learn from partners, but potentially to move uh, to move on this a lot quicker than we would be able to on our own. So as we confirm the plan, we'll be including measurement uh, and indicator approaches. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, political assent is required before we activate all of this. But the strong focus on sustainability and community involvement seem to support uh, uh, a, a very robust communi community indicator system. So we're hoping to be able to continue to learn from other jurisdictions' experiences, something that uh, has been greatly hastened by the conversation uh, here, while fitting this into uh, our own unique planning fr framework.